All right, so the problem that we are going over today is going to be we have a mixture of acetone and methanol in a beaker, and we have a screen at the top of the beaker and air passing over it. Now, the screen prevents the air from coming inside the beaker, but allows the acetone-methanol mixture to diffuse out of the mixture, out of the beaker. So, that being said, we can say that in three, or the molar flux of, of air is equal to zero within that beaker. Now we want to determine the mole fraction gradient for both acetone and methanol that diffuses out of the beaker. So we are given, or we know that at the interface we know y1, or mole fraction of acetone and the mole fraction of methanol. Now at the screen, right where the acetone and methanol diffuse out of the beaker, the mole fraction of acetone is going to be equal to zero, and the mole fraction of methanol will also be equal to zero. Now given these conditions, we're going to use equation 135 with the Maxwell-Stefan relations defined as the derivative of the mole fractions over the derivative of the distance of i, mole fractions of i, is equal to the summation from j from 1 to n of mole fraction i molar flux j minus the mole fraction, or yeah, mole fraction j times the molar flux i over the concentration times the diffusivity from I to J. Now, when we expand the summation out in regards to the mole fraction of acetone and the mole fraction of methanol, we get the mole fraction of acetone gradient is equal to the so a mole fraction of acetone is just going to be y1, and a mole fraction of methanol will be y2, and the molar flux of acetone will be n1, and the molar flux of methanol will be n2. So that being said, we have y1, y1 times n2 minus y2 times n1 over concentration diffusivity from 1 to 2 plus the plus y1 times n3 minus y3 times n1 over the concentration times the diffusivity from 1 to 3. And that is for acetone. So then we do that same thing for methanol. We have the mole fraction gradient of methanol is equal to y2 n1 minus y1 n2 over concentration times diffusivity from 1 to 2 plus y2 n3 minus y3 n2 over the concentration times the diffusivity from 2 to 3. Now we're looking at the mole fraction gradient within this beaker from z equals zero at the interface to delta, which is 0 0.24 meters at the screen. Now within this beaker we already uh, defined that the molar flux of air is equal to zero. So that being said, in these equations we can write this this um, term goes to zero because the molar flux of air is zero. <clears throat> so these are the two equations that we will use to solve for the molar flux gradient of the mixture. Now when we move on to code this we're going to use um, uh, initial value problem to solve a set of simultaneously differential equations. Now, it can be done solving these in the term from 0 to 0 0.24, but 
our calculations can be very complicated because we're moving in such small increments. So in order to have a better calculation, easier and more accurate, we are going to scale um, this problem. So instead of going from 0 to 0 0.24, we want to go from 0 to 1. Now in order to do this, we are going to define a new term, eta, which is equal to z over delta. And that scales this whole problem from 0 to 1 instead of 0 to 0 to 0.24. Now this eta we can plug in on the left hand side of the equation as dy, so the mole fraction derivative of 1 over d eta. D eta. Now in order to get that into our left hand side of the equation, we're going to define a new variable as well, f from 1 to 2. And this is going to be equal to the concentration, concentration times the diffusivity from 1 to 2 over delta. Now we're going to do that same thing for 1, 3, and 2, 3. So we have f 1, 3 and f 2, 3, which is the same exact equation. The only thing that's changing is this diffusivity. We're going to go for, for here will be diffusivity of 1, 3 and diffusivity of 2, 3. Now we can rewrite these equations below as the derivative of the mole fraction of acetone over the derivative of eta, and then we rewrite as y1 and 2 minus y2 and 1 over, instead of this denominator term, we're going to be using these f1, 2, and 3s. So it'll just be over f1 to 2 plus y1 and 3 minus y3 and 1 uh, yeah, over f1 to 3. Uh, then this is for acetone and then for methanol we do the same thing dy2 over d eta is equal to y2 and 1 minus y1 and 2 over f1 to 2 plus y2 and 3 minus y3 and 2 over f from 2 to 3. Now like we said before, these terms go to 0. Now these are the two systems of equations that we will be using in our code to solve for the molar fraction gradient. Now within the code we need an initial guess of order of magnitude for the molar flux. Um, now in order to have an accurate code we need to be at least in the ballpark of the answer in order to get an accurate answer for the molar fluxes. So in order to do that we're going to look at order of magnitude of the equations. Now the order of magnitude of a mole fraction is going to be relatively 1 and eta as well is going to be relatively 1. So that's the left hand side of the equation. So the left hand side of the equation is equal to overall order of magnitude of 1. Now we're, we're going to look at the right hand side of the equation. Now we already defined that mole fraction is going to be relatively 1 and we're going to guess for n1 and n2 the mole fluxes. So what we have to look at is this variable f. Now like we said before f from 1 to 2 is equal to the concentration times the diffusivity from 1 to 2 over delta. Now we're going to look at the order of magnitude of this variable. Now this is going to be because of the concentration we can define that the concentration given pressure and temperature is going to be P over 
rt. So this variable goes into p over rt times the diffusivity from 1 to 2 over delta. Now we can work on order of magnitude. We know that pressure is relatively 10 to the fifth and this term RT or the ideal gas constant times the temperature is going to be relatively 10 to the third and then the diffusivity for a liquid we know is going to be 10 to the negative fifth and that's all over delta which is going to be 1. So now when we solve this out in terms of order of magnitude we get relatively 10 to the negative 3. So that is going to be our initial guess for in molar flux of acetone and methanol, 10 to the negative 3. Now that we have the condition defined and all the variables set and our initial guesses, now we can move on to the coding portion of this problem. All right, so now we're going to move on to the coding portion of this problem, 117, example 117, um, using CoLaboratory, Google CoLaboratory. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to import some programs that they have already defined in this CoLaboratory. So from scipy.integrate, we're going to import solve IVP, and that's going to be to solve the initial value problems of our uh, simultaneously solve initial value problems. And then we are also going to use scipy again, but this time it's optimize. We're going to import root, and we're going to use a root solver to solve the systems of equations looking at the mole fractions as they go to zero. That's what the root solver will do. And then we are also going to be using numerical calculations, so we're going to import numpy. That's not it. Numpy as np. And then after we do all of our calculations, we are going to have to plot our solutions. So we're going to use plotly. Plotly subplots, we're going to import make subplots. And then we're going to add different calculations onto that subplot. So um, I'm going to import plotly dot graph objects as geo. And then just to modify the graph, make it a dark background versus a light background, we're going to import plotly dot PIO as PIO. No, not PIO, just IO as PIO. And then we're also going to say PIO templates default be equal to plotly dark. So, what? Oh, <laughs> misspelled. Optimize. Alright. Alright. So now, we're going to look at example 117. Looking at our 
um, uh, condition parameters. So they define the diffusivity from 1 to 2. We're going to say that is, they said it's 8.48 times 10 to the negative 6. That's going to be in meters squared per second. Then D13 is equal to 13.72 the negative 6, again meters squared per second, 2, 3 is going to be equal to 19.91 e to the negative 6. And then they also give us the pressure and temperature, so the pressure will be equal to 99.4 kilopascals or 99.4 times 10 to the third pascals. And then temperature will be equal to 328.5. That will be in Kelvin. And then we know that the ideal gas constant, R, will be equal to 8.314. And those units will be meters cubed times pascals over moles times Kelvin. And then after that, we can define our concentration as C is equal to pressure divided by R times T. And then also it gives us the diffusion path. So we know delta is equal to 0 0.24 and those meters. And then from the problem on the whiteboard, we define the new functions f of 1, 2, f of 2, 3, and f of 1, 3. So we know that f 1, 2 is going to be equal to c times the diffusivity, diffusivity of 1 to 2 over delta. And then f 1, 3 will be equal to concentration times the diffusivity 1, 3 over delta, and then F2, 3 will be equal to the concentration times the diffusivity from 2 to 3 over delta. Now that we have all of those set, we can input also our initial guesses for the molar flux from the problem on the whiteboard. We said that that would be 10 to the negative 3 and then it also gives us our initial values for the mole fractions of acetone and methanol. 0 0.319 528. Now that we have defined our parameters, we can move on to the coding or the calculation portion of this code. So what we're first going to do is we're going to set n1 equal to the initial guess and n2 equal to the initial guess. And then we are going to Define dy with eta and y, independent variable first. Now we're going to input the um, system of equations that we wrote out on the board. So that's going to be return np dot array. 
above. So for the mole fraction gradient of acetone, it will be Y1 times N1, uh, nope, N2 minus Y2 times N1 over F1 to 2. Now molar flux of air is zero, so it will be zero y3 times n1 over f1 to 3. And that will be our first equation. Now our second equation is the mole fraction gradient of methanol. So we'll say y let's say that y2 times n1 minus y1 oops, y1 times n2 over f1 to 2 y3 times n2 over f2 to 3 now we will want to return the result, or we need to find the result of the solve initial value problems of the function dy from the span 0 to 1 with the initial guess y1, or the initial conditions y1i and y2i, which are the initial conditions of the mole fractions acetone and methanol. Now we're going to define our method as the RADAU method, and we are going to find the dense output as true. So we will run that. I did not define y1. So within here, we define y1 as equal to the first portion of that array, and then y2 as equal to the second portion of that array. Oops. Second portion, but it will actually be a 1. And then we know that the mole fractions equal up to 1, so y3 will be equal to 1 minus y1 minus y2. And then now we can rerun that. smallest things will catch you up.
matter. Now it runs. Now we can look at the array that we defined here. Oops. Okay, well. I'll just look at the array. But first, before we do that, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We have to redefine this function. That way we're not using our initial guess, but we're using an array of guesses. So we will define uh, f of n where n1 is equal to the first and n2 is equal to the second, no, second. I'm going to have to put that in the function. And then we solve the initial value problem. And then we return res.sol1. Oops, these have to go inside the function. And there we go. All right, so now we can look at the initial guesses. There we go. So that's our initial guesses. And then now we can look at the root solver. equal to root the function and the argument. So these are our initial guesses and we're going to use this to solve the initial value problem as the mole fractions go to zero. So we are going to define n1 as equal to res r of x of the first, uh, then n2 is going to be equal to res r x of the second. Uh, then now what we want to do is we want to redefine our equations here and then now that we have redefined our equations we want to also solve the initial value problem as the root as the mole fractions go to zero so now we're going to solve that so that ran. So we're going to look at our res r. So our root of the function of the initial value problem solved gave us this x array. So let's do this, get rid of everything else. So here, these are the answers for the molar flux of acetone on the left and methanol on the right. And like our initial guess, it has order of magnitude of 10 to the negative 3. So that calculation was correct. So now after we do this calculation and we solve y1 and 2 all the way through, um, we are going to want to define or want to check that this is solved. So these are our mole fractions. Um, and as you can see, they are relatively zero. 
so that is correct as well. The root goes to zero. So now we want to plot everything. So we're going to say data plot is equal to, and we're going to want to use lin space. We're going to want to move in integers from zero to 51. Uh, then we're also going to want to define the solution. Say so define the solution of res r dot sol. Now instead of only looking at the first, we're going to look at the entire data plot. All right. So once that's done, now we actually need to start graphing it. So we're going to set the figure equal to make subplots where the rows are equal to one and the columns are equal to one. And then we're going to start inputting our data into this plot. So we're going to add trace for, we're going to add a trace for the acetone, methanol, and air through the system. Um, trace using our go dot scatter plots where our x is going to be equal to the, oops, eta plots, we're going to multiply that by delta in order to get x in the terms of meters. And the y portion will be equal to the solution that we have of acetone. Uh, then we are also going to name this function acetone. Now that will add the trace of acetone through our plot. Now we want to do that same thing for methanol and air. So we're going to copy this back and the only thing that we need to change is this value here. So zero indicates acetone, one is methanol. Then we have to change the name of methanol. Oh, then we're going to do the same thing for air. Now, like we said, this is going to be one minus Um, y equals, so for this it'll be one minus um, the solution of zero minus the solution of one and that will give us air because the mole fractions add up to air or add up to one. <laughs> and then we will run that. And there we go. Uh, F A U, that's why. So this mess that up. Now we come back here to rerun it. There we go. Now these are our mole fractions here on the left or on the y-axis from 0 to 1 and on the right axis we are moving from where z equals 0 to where delta is 0 0.2. Now air at the beginning then the initial mole fractions of acetone and methanol, and then as they move.
move up the beaker, their mole fractions are going to decrease because at the screen, essentially, the mole fractions of ethanol and or on acetone are zero. So that is how we solve a system of equations of differential equations on co-laboratory. Thank you.